right, guys, so I need to tell you all about three more types of reactions. Uh, we've got precipitation reactions, oxidation reduction reactions, and acid-base reactions. These are three types of reactions that they're not completely separate from the five types you already know. They're just a more specific classification of those five reactions types that you already know. And that is the synthesis, decomposition, single replacement, double replacement, uh, and combustion. So the first one that we're going to talk about is the precipitation. And in a precipitation reaction, you basically have two, maybe more than two, but in y'all's case, you only need to know two aqueous solutions. They combine to make at least one solid product. And the way that you can predict if you're going to make a solid product is to use your solubility rules that are on your star chart. And so you can use those to predict if a precipitate will in fact form. And so here are three examples for you. In the first one, we've got sodium chloride, just regular old salt, and it is an aqueous solution. Notice that all of the reactants are aqueous, meaning that all of these ionic compounds are dissolved in water. So first we've got salt water, sodium chloride, reacting with silver nitrate. And the two products that are gonna come off of that reaction are the extremely soluble sodium nitrate and our solid silver chloride. And if you look at the solubility rules, you will see that chloride salts, uh, which means an ionic compound containing chloride, most of them are soluble, but exceptions are silver, mercury, and lead. So silver chloride is in fact going to be a solid. In the second reaction we have here, we've got uh, solutions of potassium iodide and lead 2 nitrate. And what's going to be produced out of that is the soluble potassium nitrate and then the insoluble and very pretty shade of yellow, might I add, lead iodide. And then in our last one, we've got cadmium chloride reacting with sodium sulfide. And in this case, you're going to make salt or an aqueous solution of salt, so salt water, and an even prettier shade of yellow, the cadmium sulfide. So in these reactions, all that you have to be able to do is recognize that you have two aqueous solutions reacting to form at least one solid. So anytime that you see a solid, in the product side of a double replacement reaction, that's another clue, is that most of these guys are double replacement reactions. That gives you a pretty good indicator that this is a precipitation reaction. For our next type of reaction, we have oxidation reduction. And that is a reaction in which one element's charge goes up, also known as oxidation. Uh, and another element's charge goes down or is reduced. That one kind of makes sense because if you reduce something, it goes down. So in this case, what we are reducing is the charge or the oxidation number. This is also known as a redox reaction. And in order to, if you have a single replacement redox reaction, use the activity series to predict if that's even going to occur. So for these examples, what I'm gonna do is actually write the oxidation numbers of every single element in here above the element so that you can see what's happening to the oxidation states or the charges of each of these elements. So for the first one, I've got pure magnesium and the oxidation state of any element pure uh, in its pure state is zero. And then for copper chloride, I know that chlorine is, sorry y'all, my phone is ringing and I don't know how to make it shut up. that chlorine is going to have a negative one charge and copper is going to, as a result of there being two chlorines, that means this copper has to be a plus two charge. If you're kind of looking at that going, whoa, how'd you figure out that copper was a plus two? Well, I have another video that you probably need to watch called Oxidation Numbers and check that out for more help there. Now, coming across to the other side, I see that I have magnesium chloride and magnesium, when it is in a compound, is going to be a plus two charge, chlorine over here one, and then copper is now by itself, so it's going to have a charge of zero. Now looking at this, you can see that magnesium went from zero to plus two, and so the magnesium's charge went up, which means that magnesium was oxidized, and copper's charge went from plus two down 
to zero, and so that means copper was reduced. So this is an oxidation reduction reaction. On this next one down here, it is really long looking, but if once you kind of start to break it down, you realize it's not that bad. We have tin nitrate, and the nitrate polyatomic ion is going to have a negative one charge, and we have two of them, which means tin has a plus two charge. Iron nitrate bonded to three nitrates. This nitrate still has a negative one charge, which means this iron is going to be a plus three. Now coming across to the other side, we see that we have tin bonded to four nitrates. So our nitrate's still a negative one, but now our tin is going to be a plus four. And iron is now only bonded to two nitrates, so nitrate being a negative one means that this tin has to be a plus two. So let's look at our charges. Well, tin went from a plus two to a plus four, so tin's charge went up, or tin was oxidized. And iron went from a plus three down to a plus two, and so that means that iron was reduced. And now my pen has just died, so I am no longer able to write on my slides, so you're just gonna have to kinda go with the arrow. Uh, so let's see, let's get an arrow here. Okay, on this last one we have zinc reacting with hydrochloric acid to produce zinc chloride and hydrogen. Well, here we have pure element zinc, which is going to have a charge of zero, and hydrogen and chlorine, hydrochloric acid, this hydrogen is going to have a charge of plus one, chlorine is going to have a charge of negative one. Well, coming across to this side, we see that zinc is now bonded to chlorine, and so zinc is going to have a plus two charge, chlorine is still going to have that negative one. Hydrogen is now a pure element, so it's going to have a charge of zero. So zero to plus two. So zinc's charge went up, or it was oxidized. Hydrogen went from plus one down to zero, so hydrogen was reduced. And that's the best way to recognize an oxidation reduction reaction is just to start writing the charges down and see what changed. So our final type of reaction that we need to talk about is acid-base, and that's a reaction in which an acid and a base react to form a more neutral solution. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's gonna go all the way to a neutral solution, but it's just more neutral than either of the two started out. Usually, you're gonna uh, produce water and some kind of an ionic compound, and we usually call these ionic compounds salts. And in your case, it's always going to form water and an ionic compound. We're not going to have to worry at this level about the more complicated forms of acid-base reactions. So coming down here, we have HCl, hydrochloric acid, with sodium hydroxide. This guy is a base. Anything that ends in hydroxide is going to be a base. So we have acid plus base yields sodium chloride, which is the quintessential ionic compound, and water. Then down here on the next one, we have sulfuric acid plus potassium hydroxide gives us the ionic compound potassium sulfate and water. And then lastly, we have magnesium hydroxide reacting with nitric acid, producing the ionic compound magnesium nitrate and, you guessed it, water. So for our last little thing here, I want you guys to look at these four reactions and classify them as precipitation, redox, or acid base. So pause this, work it out, and then hit play again when you are ready to go. So on this first one, I see that I have pure calcium and zinc nitrate. And then on the other side, I see I have calcium nitrate and pure zinc. So I know that my pure elements are both gonna have a charge of zero. I know that zinc, when it's in a compound, is a plus two. Calcium, when it's in a compound, is a plus two. So calcium went from zero to plus two. Zinc went from plus two down to zero. So this is an oxidation reduction or redox reaction. Now looking at this one, I see that I have calcium hydroxide, which is the big indicator that you have a base. And then I have a compound that starts with a hydrogen, which is a good hint that you have an acid. So we have a base plus an acid giving me water plus an ionic compound. So this would be an acid-base reaction. And you might be looking at that going, but wait, wait, wait. 
you made a solid. And you're right, I did. I had two aqueous solutions that produced a solid. So this is also a precipitation reaction. Good call if you were able to pick out that it's both an acid base and a precipitation reaction. On this next one, we have aluminum chloride plus lead nitrate gives me lead chloride and aluminum nitrate. Well, I don't see that I have any uh, elements starting out with a zero oxidation charge. And I'm looking at this going aqueous plus aqueous gives me a solid. So that means this has to be a precipitation reaction. And then for my last one, I have sodium hydroxide base plus an, a compound that starts with hydrogen, in this case, hydrobromic acid. So base plus acid gives us ionic compound plus water. So this is an acid-base reaction. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see y'all later.